Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how to use the water plugin with PCG. The water plugin basically uses splines and circular splines to create rivers and lakes, but there are a couple quirks. So I will also show you how to fix the misalignment of the river splines. And I'll also show you a straightforward way to determine whether a point is in the river or outside the river. And I'll show you how to do a fun little gradient at the boundary of rivers and lakes. This involves both detecting the boundary and outputting an attribute to a material. To follow along, you'll want to make sure you have the water plugin installed. All right, first thing I'm going to do is add water body lake, and I'll add two rivers. Water body river, drag that out, and I will duplicate it, hold alt, and drag it off to here. And there we go, we got two rivers connected up to this lake. All right, so now let's start the PCG. Blueprint, actor, BP underscore water, and I'll make a PCG, PCG underscore water. And in the blueprint, I'm going to add a spline and a PCG graph. And for the PCG, I can just select water. For the spline, I'm going to add a couple of points to it. And let me move this point a little off as well, and I'll make it a closed loop. Compile, save, and back into here, let me drag my blueprint into the world. I'm going to just expand it so it encompasses all of the water. That should be good. Let's shrink this one down a little bit. Okay, and now let's start on the PCG. I can close this blueprint. And I'm going to use a get spline data and set it to all world actors by class. And I'm just going to select water body. Water body lake will be the lake. And water body river will be the river. For the lake, I will use a spline sampler and set it to distance on interior. And if we debug that, we've got our lake points. For the river, it takes a little more. I'm going to start with a spline sampler. And if I debug this one, I'll set it to distance on spline as well. And don't forget to check select multiple on the get spline data node. This one is also looking fine, but if I update the river and change its width to 512, we can see that this is not shrinking with the river. And what I found is that if we rotate the river 90 degrees and we reset the bounds, then it will conform to the river size. So let's do that. Transform points, rotate it 90 degrees on the z-axis, bounds modifier. Set it to set, bounds min will be negative 0.5 to 0.5, negative 0.3 to 0.3 on the y-axis, and negative, let's do negative 100 to 100 on the z-axis, because we're going to be doing some overlap checks on this later, so this will just help those along. And now we can see that the river sampling conforms pretty well to the river. All right, let's do a couple more things. If I debug both of these, we can see that the river overlaps the lake. Well, not this river, so let's fix that. And sometimes this does not regen. There we go. So now the river overlaps the lake. Let's uh, fix this so that we remove the overlap and actually save the overlapped sections. So for that, I can use an intersection node between the river and the lake. And if I plug this in and debug, I don't see anything. That's because this get spline data is actually sending two separate point sets into the intersection node. And we have to merge before we can do that. And 
there we go. There are our overlapping points. And now if I do a difference between the intersection and the lake, and change it to binary, if I debug this, we see the lake without the river overlap points. Now I'm going to do something different for the river. I'm not just going to do an intersection to remove the points from it, because as you can see, the points are rather wide. So I'm going to convert these over to a little more usable points data. And for that, I'm going to get spline data. And this is going to get the spline that we created on the blueprint. So I'll just leave it at itself. Spline sampler. Distance on interior. Just like for the lake. And now from this merge, I'm going to do an intersection. And I'll actually plug in the outer bounds first. And now if I debug this, we see a bunch of little points. You can't really tell, so let me change this to absolute 0.5. There we go, a bunch of little points. And now we can remove the other points from this. So let's do the same difference here and plug in the intersection into the difference. And if I debug this, we're not seeing anything, and that is because these points aren't actually overlapping yet. See, there's a little gap between them, so I just need to increase their bounds a little bit. And while I increase the bounds here, we inherited the points from this spline data. So I'm going to need to increase the bounds somewhere else. I'll increase the bounds right here and just scale them up by, let's just do 5 and 5, and that should allow them to intersect. And there we go. So if I turn off this debug, we see the river without the lake points. Okay, we can do one last thing, and that is to convert these lake points to a gradient. For that, I will just use a distance node and use the source as the intersection, and the target will be the river. So the farther away from the river it is, the more the density changes. Let's set it to 2000. And I find center bounds on this works better than sphere bounds. And if I save this and debug this distance node, there's a nice little gradient. So if I enable the lake and the river, we can see that the points go from the river on into the lake. And there's a bit of gradient. It's not perfect. But let's address that now. I'm going to actually set up this intersection to look a little more pleasing. So for that, let me go ahead and select the water body river. And I will shrink down this little tangent setter here. And I'm going to duplicate this node once. And I'll duplicate it backwards a second time. And let me shrink this down again. We don't want the spline going in all weird directions when we do this. OK, now I have three little points right here. And I already have water selected on my water body river. So let me just set the river width up. And if I refresh, I'm going to pull this into the other window. And there we go. Let me go ahead and set this down a little bit. Refresh. And let me move this out here a little to make it a little bit smoother of a mouth. Refresh again, and there we go. A little water pattern where it kind of spreads out and then disperses from the river. And let's do the same thing on the inbound side. Speeding this up because it's a lot of clicking. Make sure all of your splines and tangents make a straight line so it creates a smooth bulb at the end. There we go. That's good enough. Let me debug these points again to see what we've got.
Now we have the river is black, density is zero density. And as it flows into the lake, it raises its density. So now I'm going to feed all of this into transform points. Just shuffle everything around a little bit. And let's just move them by plus minus 50 on the offset. And 0 to 360 rotation. And scale, I'm just going to do 0.1 to 0.1 because I'm going to take some rocks and flatten them here. And now let me do a self-rooting, and let's see what this takes out. There we go, a lot fewer points. Let me remove the points from the outside here. So what I know is that I want points that are down in the water, but not up at the edge. So first, let's make a projection node. And I'm going to grab the input for this. And I'll just use, let's use landscape. Debug this. All right, we've got points that are aligning to the land. So now if I inspect this, let me see what height the land appears to be at. Position Z 100, negative 400, that must be the lake points. So somewhere around 50 to 100 is probably the intersection of the water. So let's do a point filter. I'm going to filter on position dot Z is less than constant threshold. Set it to 50. And let's see what we've got. Yeah, that looks like things that are inside the river. So now I will just do a static mesh spawner. And I'm going to spawn a new mesh entry and just use Brock. Turn off debug here. And there we go, a bunch of rocks. They're not very flat though, so let's see what I need to do with that. Ah, I need to check uniform scale on this earlier transform points because right now these point ones are being ignored. There we go. Now we've got some flat rocks. Okay, so if you want to create something on the outside, you now have these points that you could use for stuff along the river's edge, little plant life, that sort of thing. And then if you subtract all of these points from these points using a difference node, you can spawn trees and all sorts of other things outside the water zone. That's pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to go over it now. What I am going to go over is how to modify these static meshes based on the density. And for that, I'm going to use an instant packer type of PCG instance packer by attribute. And now that I've done that, I can add an attribute. And I'm just going to call it green. And now I'm going to add, add an attribute operation. Because green doesn't currently exist, I'm going to copy density to green. And now I am sending green over based on density. And let me uh, merge these points, because right now we're only seeing one set of points. Now if I debug, there we go. So density and green are 0.881 for some, and 1 for others, and 0 for others. All right, so now that I've done this, I have to actually use this attribute. So for that, I'm going to go into SM Rock, and in SM Rock, I'm going to select Find the Material, and I'm just going to duplicate this material. I'll call it M underscore Green Rock. And if I open this up, I can close SM Rock. And for Green Rock, I'm going to take this texture, per instance, Custom Data node, and this is going to be green. I have it set to data index 0, and in the PCG, 
the value that I'm sending over for green is index 0. And now I'm going to modify the texture based on the density. So for that, I'll use a 1 minus node. I'm going to be taking away from the non-green colors the more green it is, which will basically turn it green. So I'll multiply this 1 minus x by red, and I'll also multiply by blue. And now I can make a float 3 and hook the red and the blue up, and the green is just going to go straight in here as well. And from here, I'm just going to add a blend overlay I find is pretty pleasing, and the blend will be this new value that I've created, and the base color will be the base. Hook that up, save it. Now back in the PCG, It saves. There we go. Now back in the PCG. If I scroll up, I have the override material. I'm just going to open that and type in green rock. And I'm going to just set this green rock material that I just created on these rocks. And if I look at this, and let me turn off the water just to make it a little easier to see what's going on. There we go. So on the river, we have the zero density rocks, which are still gray, and then it's kind of hard to see, but we've got a gradient from the rocks entering the lake, and in the still water of the lake, let's say, they are getting covered in moss and algae and whatever rocks get covered in and turning green, and then they go back to regular rocks outside. All right, so that should get you set up using the water plugin with PCG. Enjoy.